This video's about the maybe you've seen it before, Parasaurolophus. With a body length of 10 meters and a humble yet dignified appearance, this herbivorous dinosaur has indeed piqued our interest. For this creature has one incredibly distinguishing feature, the one meter long crest crowning its head. Why did the Parasaurolophus wear this crown? Wouldn't it have been uncomfortable? Well, it's about time we explore the science behind Parasaurolophus's cranial crest. The year is 1922. Canadian paleontologist William Parks has just discovered a strange-looking dinosaur skeleton in Alberta, Canada, and dubbed it Parasaurolophus, while carry, meaning near-crested lizard. As more and more people saw this dinosaur's appearance, paleontologists began to wonder what the crest curving from its forehead towards its neck and shoulders had been used for. Interestingly, between 1930 and 1960, paleontologists looked at Parasaurolophus's duckbill and webbed feet and believed the dinosaur to be aquatic. Perhaps this explains why Professor Sherwood Romer, a famous vertebrate paleontologist at the time, proposed that Parasaurolophus Parasaurolophus may have used the crest as a snorkel. Professor Romer pointed out the hollow crest connected to the dinosaur's nose as evidence. If a predator like T. rex showed up, Parasaurolophus could slip underwater and use its snorkel to breathe. Soon, others began coming up with similar theories. Charles Sternberg and Professor Edwin Colbert both suggested that Parasaurolophus could have used its crest to store air. However, as you may have guessed, these theories eventually fell apart. First of all, Parasaurolophus is 10 meters long, making it much too large for the crest to have been an effective oxygen tank. Second, as it was discovered that Parasaurolophus's feet weren't actually webbed and that the dinosaur had in fact been terrestrial, the idea of its crest being used for snorkeling didn't make much sense. And more importantly, if the crest had been used as a snorkel, there should have been a hole somewhere. Of all the Parasaurolophus fossils we've found so far, however, not a single one has had a hole in its crest. The crests were closed, as was the case for the snorkeling Parasaurolophus. We then entered another period of creative crest hypotheses. Australian paleontologist Aidan Abel claimed that members of the Parasaurolophus species had used their crest to fight for dominance, much like the modern moose. While Professor John Ostrom, hello again, suspected that the crest had been an organ to help the creature smell better. There was even talk of the crest being used to control the animal's salt levels. However, none of these theories had enough evidence to support them and were thus unaccepted by the wider academic community. Okay, this is getting ridiculous. What was the crest used for? We finally started making some headway in 1931 with a theory by Professor Carl Winman. Though it may have seemed a bit cheeky at the time, he proposed that the Parasaurolophus mystery crest had been used for making calls. Unbelievable, I know. And people at that time must have thought so too, seeing how the theory didn't garner much attention until 1981, when Professor David Weeshample published his own fateful findings. He proposed that the crest's emptiness allowed for Parasaurolophus to amplify its call, just like a wind instrument. Swans use the empty space within their sternums to amplify their honks, and in his paper, Professor Weishepel suggested that Parasaurolophus had used its crest in a similar manner. He also hypothesized that each species in the Parasaurolophus genus could make a different sound, as crest length was unique to each species. By analyzing the length and volume of Parasaurolophus Walkeri's crest, Professor Weishepel estimated that its call might have been around 48 to 240 hertz, which is quite a low sound. And in 1996, paleontologist Tom Williamson and computer modeling expert Dr. Carl Digert ran an experiment that changed everything. After creating a three-dimensional model of a Parasaurolophus crest fossil, they designed a simulation where air was blown into its hollow chamber. 
Amazingly, the experimenters heard Parasaurolophus's cry coming from their computer. It sounded like a deep, trumpety wind instrument. Because Parasaurolophus's crest was hollow, and air could flow from its nostrils into this hollow, the crest served as a resonator for the creature's cries. Okay, you must be dying to know what a Parasaurolophus wall carry call sounds like, so why don't we take a listen? Isn't that incredible? If Parasaurolophus really used its crest like this, then we'd be listening to a dinosaur call from tens of millions of years ago. But there remains one more question to be answered. Why were Parasaurolophus's cries around a low 30 hertz? And why was the sound so amplified? So two questions, I guess. Professor Tom Williamson from the modeling experiment proposed the following. Low-frequency sound waves can travel farther and avoid obstacles better than high-frequency sound, allowing the calls to travel long distances without betraying the source to prying ears of potential predators. Basically, if a herd of Parasaurolophus dinos were minding their own business, then one of them spotted a predator, the one dinosaur could alert its herd mates, even if they were far away, without giving away its position. Very advantageous. This theory is currently the most widely accepted as to how Parasaurolophus used its crest as a signaling device. Also, other dinosaurs from the Lambeosaurine subfamily above the Parasaurolophus genus have differently shaped horns, so it's suspected that these dinosaurs could differentiate members of their species by decoding their cries as well. Some have recently speculated that the crest calling had been used in courting practices as well. What theories do you think will bring Parasaurolophus to life next time? Science is the window to the world, and this has been Science Dream. Thank you.